If you have the money today, should you invest in an Amazon FBA business or should you actually buy a house? This is what exactly we're going to talk about in this video. Now, here is something that is very important that I want to get out there and that all of you guys should understand is that I'm not saying that you should never buy a house in your lifetime, but you've got the money today and you're contemplating whether if you should start a business such as an Amazon FBA business or invest in buying a house. This is what I'm going to be talking about in this video. Now, if this is your first time to the channel, consider subscribing. Also, give this video a thumbs up. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Now, um, when I first got married, uh, or as I was getting married uh, in 2018, um, we wanted to... So before that, you know, I had been influenced by my parents that rent is bad, owning is good, right? Because rent, you're paying somebody, a landlord, and all this money is going in the gutter where if you are buying, this is mortgage and it's kind of coming back to you, right? Which in a sense, it, it makes sense, right? So right before I got married, you know, I had just started, you know, my business was doing pretty well. My debt, I don't know if it was clear, but it was getting clear. And um, so we wanted to buy something. And I said, you know, we'll just buy an apartment because in San Diego at the time, I mean, an apartment, one bedroom, it's probably about like two, three hundred thousand dollars. So I said, you know, I don't want to spend too much money. We'll just get us an apartment. And then from there, in a couple of years, maybe we'll buy a bigger house or something like that. Right. And then we were, you know, even, you know, one bedroom, even if we were going to have a baby, you know, we still can manage. So we started looking and I was just looking at the rate of investment. Right. And, and, and where it was going to, you know, what, what was the future of, of this property? Because to me, I was looking at it as, I need to pull money out of my business and I need to pay taxes on that money in order for me to be able to invest it in the apartment, right? To buy the apartment with, because the money that I was paying myself was just enough to pay my expenses. I, I until today, I don't pay myself any more than I need to, right? Otherwise, the money stays in the business, it gets reinvested in the business, and you know, obviously I don't need to pay taxes on it. I don't need to pay personal tax, which is the, the you know, after I think it's three or 400,000, you know, you get taxed the, at the highest levels, right? So I always have kept the money in the business. So what I realized is that if I were to buy a $300,000 uh, 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 apartment at the time, my income wasn't, or I'm, I'm sorry, my, um, my credit was very bad because I had just came out of my restaurant and I had truly bad credit. So I needed to bring in my wife. Now, if I needed to bring in my wife, we weren't jointly uh, uh, filing just yet because we were not married. And her income was only three, 4,000 per month, right? So if I were to bring myself in, so because of my income, I needed to put in a bigger of a down payment because of my credit. So that way I, you know, because she had the credit, but I had the income. But again, putting us together, I needed to put more down payment. And for me, I was looking at nearly 50%. So if it was 300,000, I was gonna put in at least 100 to $150,000 in, um, you know, in down payment. And then when I was doing the math, I needed to pull that money out of the business in taxes. So I need to earn an extra $150,000 for myself. Paid, and really I need to earn like, like 200 or 250,000 for me to end up with 150 because after taxes, I need to have 150, right? So just doing the calculations did not really make sense to me. And honestly, I am so glad that I didn't do it because, well, I'll show you here what I'm talking about. So the very first thing is how do you classify the two, the two businesses or the two ventures in terms of asset class, right? So asset class is, you know, depends on how sophisticated you want to get. I want to say it's liabilities or assets, you know? It's either a asset which generates cash flow, which it's an investment, which actually grows with time, or it's a liability, which you're just kind of like putting money into it. At the time, from what I was looking at it, is Amazon FBA is a, let's just draw a line right here. Let's draw a line right here. So Amazon FBA was a uh, asset. And then a home was a liability. And then I'll explain why. Okay, why is this an asset? Why is this a liability? Well, I'll explain to you here why, but if this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and also drop your questions below. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what exactly you'd like to see from our channel in the future. So for me, an Amazon FBA business, it's a business that generates cash flow. Now, yes, money needs to go into it. Well, 
same thing in here. You need to invest at least 10, 20% upfront, and then you're putting in every single month. Now, unlike this, although you are reinvesting the money that you are generating from it to grow it, here you are putting money in, there is no money coming out. Every month you have to pay down the mortgage. Every month you have to, you know, you have to, uh, um, like everything is on you. You know, you have to mow the lawn, you have to pay for the garbage, you have to pay for uh, 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 property tax. If something breaks, if the roof needs to go, if you need to, you know, redo something, if the, if the, you know, anything that really needs to happen in a place, it's on you. And then you're just putting in money into it every single month where having a, a, how, a, a business like an Amazon FBA business, for instance, again, although you are reinvesting the money, but that's money you're getting from the business plus profit, you're reinvesting and then the, the top of the line keeps increasing, right? Now, the second thing is P&L, which is profit and loss, right? Again, going back to what I just discussed early in the earlier point is that your profit, here there is a profit. Here, there is loss. And some people will argue and say, but this is not a loss. This is money being reinvested back into the business, paying down the mortgage, which is increasing my equity. And you are 100% right. But have you looked at the 30-year term for your house? If you were to finance a house at, say, 4% for 30 years, and the house was 400000 after 30 years, you would have paid double the house. And the question is, would the house have doubled after 30 years? I don't know. During this period, and maybe it, it increased in value in 30 years, but it's really exactly where it was 30 years ago because you've paid double. So even if its value have doubled 30 years later, you've paid for that value as you're going. So for you, there is no profit. Does that make sense? Let me say this one more time. So if the house is worth 400,000 today, and then in 30 years, it's worth 800,000. In this 30 years, you have paid 800,000 because it's 4% per year for 30 years. And usually that comes out to be at least the same amount of the principal, if not more. So you have paid the entire amount during the 30 years, although the house value has doubled, you've paid it all the way up there. And not only just that, but you have also paid for everything that broke. You've probably paid for at least one time brand new roof. You've probably changed, done some major remodels throughout this 30 years. If not, the house probably not worth 800,000, right? And now you've got a house that's worth 800,000, but that's at least 30 years old, if not 40 and 50 years old. So really how good is the house at, that, at, at the end of the 30 years, right? Where an Amazon business, it's cash positive. It's generating cash flow every single month. There is money coming out of it that you can either reinvest or take out and do something else, right? The very uh, last thing is value. And again, this kind of goes back to what I just talked about right now. An Amazon business, as you are growing, you should be net profiting 25 to 35% per month, every single month. And as your business grows, your value grows. And it all depends on how you value your business. Some people will take your top revenue and multiply that by two to five X. Some people will take your net profit and multiply that by 10 to 30 X. So it all depends on how you go about it and how you want your business to be evaluated. But there is major value here. We're here 30 years later. Again, you've paid the entire way up there, but now you've got a house that is 30 years old or 40 or 50 that's worth 800,000, but you've really paid your whole way up there. Right? So those are a few things that, I, that are really important for you to understand before you go and try to buy a home. Now, I'm not saying that you should not buy a home, right? But I'm saying that if you are just starting out in your journey, especially if you are brand new and, and especially if you are a couple and you are just looking to get married or looking to move out of your parents' house or you are a student or whatever, the very first money you make should not be invested or put into a house, spent on a house really. It should be reinvested back into your business. And this is exactly what I'm doing. I'm an eight figure earner and I still rent until this day. Now, some of you may say, well, this is stupid because my rent is $3,000 per month. And it's really not a lot for where I live and what I get and, and, and the, the property size. Um, for everybody at my level, their rent is at least, I have multiple friends that 
their rent is anywhere between ten to twenty thousand dollars per month. I won't do that. I can't get myself to do that. But where I live is if anything breaks inside of the apartment, we simply put in a request. Within twenty four hours, it's fixed. There is a pool downstairs. There's a full gym downstairs. There's amenities. There's always events. Last night there was an event downstairs and by the pool area, right? All these things for a homeowner are not available. Now, am I going to ever buy a house? Absolutely, because I think as my, you know, as I have children and as they grow up, I probably would want to have my own space. I wouldn't want to have them, you know, I want to be a little bit more private, right? But as I am building my business, I can't be thinking about who's going to mow the line. I can't be thinking about the sprinkler system is down. I can't be thinking about, you know, the roof is going bad, we need to replace it. I can't be thinking about all that stuff. I can only be thinking about one thing because for me, it's all about keeping things simple and all about focusing. And if I'm going to focus and if I want to focus on my business, everything else has to be completely dialed in, which is why I always wear black because I can't spend time shopping yesterday. We went to the mall, I walked into one store, and then I bought four pieces of clothes in probably about 20 minutes. I spent $230 and I walked out. It w there were two jackets and then there were two long sleeve shirts. The only reason I did that because we're going to San Diego in three weeks and I know it's cold in San Diego and I only have short sleeve because I live in Miami, right? They're black, go with the brand, very simple. I knew what I needed, I knew what I wanted. It doesn't take me long to shop if and when I do shop right? These shirts I bought probably about five, six months ago. Maybe sometimes next year I'll probably throw out all of my shirts and I'll go and buy four or five new shirts just to replace them. And that's it, right? Because my focus is my business and my relationship with my, with my wife. I try to make it as mellow as possible. And I try to make it as less complicated as possible because the more my, uh, my uh, uh, um, relationship with my wife and my relationship and, and, and the more focused I am on my, my house and how everything is being ran at home, the less focus I have on my business. Therefore, the business will suffer. So that's why it was very important for me in my early years that I took focus away from the home and doing all that. Like sometimes just thinking about buy, the, the whole home buying process, I get a headache and I'm like, I don't know how I can do it because you got to tour all these houses you got to, you know, talk to agents. You got to go through financing. You got to do all that. I need to earn the money first, you know, because again, I earn 5,000 per month. My wife earns 5,000 per month. We live on 10,000 per month and that's it. Usually we've got at least one to 3,000 every single month that we dump into our savings. Aside from that, all of our money stays in the company, right? It's not our money. It's the company's money because we know at some point we were going to want to reinvest. We're going to want to build more infrastructure. We're going to want to do all that, right? And that's why I stay away from investments and, and real estate and all this stuff because I know my business can grow and grow and grow. So it's like, why take focus from there and put it somewhere else? It's all about keep it simple, stupid, kiss and focus. That's very important, right? So again, I'm not saying that this, that buying a home is bad. I'm just saying that you have to be very careful about when you buy a home. And then one last thing that I did not add here is mobility. This is massive for me. This is probably the biggest thing for me. Um, and if I had bought that apartment, I wouldn't be in Miami. And if I didn't move to Miami, I don't know if I would have gone from seven, eight figures, right? Because I am a big believer that the reason why we were able to scale our business massively in such a short amount of time, because I put myself in discomfort. I was very discomfortable. This discomfortable? That's not a word. Uncomfortable. That's not a word. Uncomfortable. I was very uncomfortable for, for about a month there. And then because I refocused again, I was living in San Diego. My parents were 15 minutes away. Her parent, my wife's parents were 15 minutes away. My family, you know, my friends lived there. Everybody lived there. Right. So I, you know, Fridays we spent it with, um, my parents or her parents on Friday, we spent it with one of the parents. Saturday, we spent it with the other parents. Sundays we went out with friends, you know, and it was always something to do. And I only really was focused on my business three, four times a week. And even those times I was thinking about what are we going to do when we go here and we go there. We're here. I don't know anybody. I'm focused on my business, right? So mobility, I was, I wouldn't be able, you know, trying to sell something. I don't care how easy it is Just trying to sell it, find the right offer, do all that, go through all that stuff where I've decided to move. Our, our lease was over. We were month to month. 
We picked up everything. We said, have a nice day. We found a place here. It took us like a week, you know, a couple hours online and didn't even see it in person. We just saw it on tour with a phone and that's it. That was that. So again, not saying that buying a home ever is a bad investment. Just buying a home in your early stages is probably a bad move and you should invest in a business or you should invest in your growth. Now, maybe you you know, you, you're, you, you're not a, an entrepreneur material, but if you weren't, you wouldn't even be watching this channel, but maybe you're not, you know, then focus on whatever your growth is. And maybe your growth is you want to become a bodybuilder. Maybe you want to have a great relationship with your wife and have kids and raise them correctly. That should be your focus, right? Um, and then from there, then you can buy a home and go from there. Outside of that, appreciate you all watching. Again, if you're not a subscriber, please become so. Smash thumbs up button. Also, if you want to learn from us, how to do this and how to make sure you do it correctly. There's a link below this video that takes you to a short presentation that walks you through exactly how to do everything and then takes you to, uh, 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 you know, uh, takes you to an application form where you can actually get on a call with one of our enrollment advisors, ask questions and go from there. Outside of that, love you guys. Thank you all for watching. See you in the next video. Take care.